This is an awesome show with Peter Defty. Peter's been dabbling in low carb, high fat applications for, for sports, for endurance athletes, and also strength athletes alike for the past 17 years. He's really a pioneer in this field. No one 17 years ago that I know, very few people I should say, have been doing this type of work for this long. And he's great friends with Stephen Finney, Jeff Volick, and many others. And he was part of the faster study recruiting subjects for that. So with that, guys, let's dive back into it with Peter. You know, it's funny though, so many people um, get excited about having high levels of blood ketones, but no one gets excited about having high glucose, you know? So I think we get, we get confused that ketones really are energy substrates. Yes. And, and so for, for some people, I mean, most athletes I've found in, in myself, like my ketones don't get very high because we're, we're well, we can t- I can tell you, we're adapted. Yeah. So, so talk about that because so many people are, they're testing their ketones and they get excited that they're four millimolar or whatever. And right. To me, I'm like, I don't know that I would be excited about that. But well, you know? well, a lot of the performance, what we see with a lot of the, the the athletes that are doing OFM, which is a very highly fat adapted state, but we're looking at the performance, so we are using some carbs and stuff. That a lot of times, like in the morning, there we see that their their serum ketones are actually low and not clinically in ketosis. We see a shift towards lower, and it's, it's not what's in your blood when you're an athlete. It's not what's in your blood. It's what you're burning. Mm-hmm. And so I think there's a different metabolic set point when you're well adapted. And so, and we even see a lot of these athletes ha- run, tend to ha- run high glucose. Now, there's a spectrum. So some people, depending on if you're a hyper responder or what, you know, some people will pull higher blood ketones and lower glucose. But... We see a trend to what people are doing more higher intensity, more competitive racing stuff towards lower fasting ketone levels and fairly high glucose. And the interesting thing is post-exercise is where it's really interesting because that's where you can kind of track what your body's doing by proxy. Mm-hmm. Because my, 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 my thinking is that your body is going to, when you're fat adapted, your body will produce mainly hepatically the the energy substrates to meet the metabolic need. So if you're doing something and say you go out and do a fasted run or a ride and you hammer at the end, we'll see, I've had people, even Dr. Edwards just called me up in the middle of the night because I told him, he says, holy crap, my, my, my blood sugar is 165. Mm-hmm. I've seen people go as high as 200 post-exercise that their blood glucose will just spike. But as was shown in, in faster, that's a transient thing that, that immediately gets stored in the glycogen. Right. But what happens is you you have this upregulation of all the systems to produce the energy to meet that metabolic need, then you stop. Well, it takes a while for that system to shut down, so you get these spikes. We see a mild ketone rise, and then we see often a very sharp blood glucose spike, because when you stop, because you're fat adapted, your body's going to prefer to burn the ketones and the, and the beta oxidate, use beta oxidation, and then all of a sudden it's just, the glucose starts stacking up, and, and, and it just elegantly gets transferred into glycogen stores. Interesting. Yeah. And so that was one of the interesting findings of the FASTER study is that the keto-adapted athletes or fat-adapted athletes yes. uh, tend to replenish glycogen despite not eating the carbohydrates. That's exactly it. That, that, that's what a lot of people miss is, is they were restoring their glycogen levels just as much as the high-carb athletes, but they weren't taking in any carbohydrates. Yeah. Interesting. And, and it, it, you know, everybody's saying that's novel, but that's what we've been seeing. And, it's, it's this, and then what we saw I've been seeing for years is these, these really sharp glucose spikes post-exercise. Mm-hmm. So if people aren't aware of this information, they may get a little scared and think, oh my gosh, I'm pre-diabetic or something else is going yeah. on. But this is a very normal, especially I think the, the operative word there is if they finish off or if the workout includes some glycolytic demand. Threshold, yeah, higher intensity where you're pushing your glycolytic or you're pushing over into glycolytic spectrum. You know, it's going to signal to the liver, hey, we need some glucose. And because you're fat adapted, you can make, Plenty of glucose from fat.